Hello, 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 beautiful people. Welcome to Rootbound, the podcast, not about plants. Hey guys, and welcome to episode eight. If you're watching me on YouTube, you may realize I'm wearing the same thing because I'm knocking out multiple episodes in one night. Woo! Love that for me. Thank you. Even though I can't hear you, I know you're congratulating me. Mm. Trying to stay consistent. Today we're going to talk about success breeds lack of passion. And you may go scratching your head like, how is that? How is that? Because if you're successful, that means you're passionate because you can't be successful if you're not passionate, right? Um, Well, let me just tell you a little story about myself. Now, that might not be true for everybody else, but like I said, I'm here to talk about from my perspective. Um, If you're an avid listener to Rootbound, you know that I made six figures. I got into the six-figure salary before my age, before age 30. Um, And I remember writing that down, make six figures, by the time, I think my goal was 40. I think my goal was 40. I don't know why, but that seems like the salary I should be at, at 40. And I achieved that before I was 30. And I just was over the moon. I remember having a salary in my mind when I was going up for this promotion and they met that salary plus 15,000. Let me say that again. I had a number in my head and they met that plus $15,000 a year. I was shocked, shocked. My initial reaction, other than shocked, was I made it, honey, I made it. We are in the big leagues, hey, hey. Because again, this was my goal for when I turned 40, right? And here I am before I turned 30, I think I was 28, 29. And I achieved that goal. Lordy, I will tell you, my brain just went to, oh, the things I could achieve. If I'm already here at before I'm 30, the things I could achieve. And I just got so excited. I got, I was like, I'm going to continue to grow. I'm going to continue to develop. I'm going to continue to push myself. Wow. And then when I went to uh, company meetings um, where we had everybody that did the same job that I did, I looked around. I was one out of, so out of almost a hundred people, I was maybe one out of five or six black people. And out of those, there was maybe three women. Yeah, three, three women. I was just so ecstatic. I felt so proud of myself. I felt so like blessed and so grateful. But we wouldn't be talking about this if it all was hunky-dory again to the title success breeds lack of passion talking about for me but also i think that this is a common thing for people because when if you look up on youtube right now i quit my six-figure job i quit a job i quit my job period you're starting to see a bunch of millennials quit high-paying jobs because they weren't happy Jobs that they push themselves and their family push them towards because to their families, and a lot of them are first born Americans. Um, a lot of them are first generation college students. Their, their family really bit off on the American dream and said, I want my kid to become a doctor, lawyer, whatever, some kind of college graduate because that is what it's going to take to make sure he's happy. And then the child bit off on that and said, okay, I believe in that vision for that you have for me, mom and dad. I'm going to push myself as well. And so all these videos, if you look it up on YouTube, I quit my job. A lot, all of them are talking about the fact that once they got that job, they were miserable. There's a guy I, and I, let's see if I can look him up really quick. Um, he probably is like one of the first people that pop up. He is the first person that pops up when you put in, I quit my job is a guy named Vincent Chan. He quit a job where he was making $120,000 a year. Um, and why 
because he was not happy. He talks about on that episode, and I encourage you guys to listen to it. It almost has a million views, but I encourage you guys to listen to it. He said one time his mom called him and he and he she just asked him what did he want for dinner when he got home? And he blew up at her. He blew up at her. He had attitude. She he was so mad that he she was interrupting his work week and or his work time and he was pissed. And he had a moment of realization like this isn't what life's supposed to be. My mom is not going to be here forever. Forever. One day I'm going to turn around and she's going to be gone and I'm wasting this time that I would be spending with my mother at this job where it's just mindless. And so again, he made $120,000 a year. Do you know what the population of people is that makes over a hundred thousand? Okay. So here it is. So as of June 30th of this year, the percentage of people that make over a hundred thousand, um, Oh, wow. These are households, so this is not individual. So just take it with a grain of salt. And I think it'll just make my argument. It'll still make my argument. So the total number of American households earning more than 100,000 is 25%. And it's expecting to decrease next year to 17%. 17. That's 8% dip in one year that we're expecting to see less people, we're expecting to see more household make less money. So this guy was making a hundred and 120,000. He was, he was one out of four people that will ever make that amount of money. And he's telling you as well as a bunch of people, if you look it up on YouTube, and I think YouTube is obviously just a, um, an example of subculture, right? So they're an example of what a lot of people feel. They're just not loading it up onto YouTube. He, he expressed and he is sharing that he was not happy. He wasn't happy and he was, in fact, knowing how much he loved his mother and his father, he wasn't spending any time with them. He was spending 90, well, no, my not, probably not 90, but maybe 70% of his life at work. He'd come home, go to sleep, eat, go back. So most of his time was sit in front of a, in front of a computer zoning away because I think he was like a data analyst or something like that zoning away putting numbers into this system and he was miserable he was miserable he talked about how the culture that he worked that people were rewarded for sacrifice and you may work in a place like that I know I was we rewarded people publicly monetarily for um and this isn't just the, cult, the the place I worked on. This is an American culture. We reward people based off of their individual sacrifice to an organization. If you think about the last time that you had a meeting um, and somebody was recognized, chances are you're gonna, they're going to recognize their heroism for saving something, firefighting in some way, be, being kind of like a superhero for something that went wrong or catastrophic. Or somebody that did some extra hours, came in and did extra work, came in and, you know, whatever, right? That's what we recognize. We, I don't think I ever seen anybody be recognized at work that says, hey, I want to recognize Shelly because, uh, you know, we had a really big project to do. And Shelly said she couldn't stay because she, uh, you know, she didn't want to give up her time with her son. Her son had, you know, a basketball practice and she promised she would be there. And and Kelly said, no, she she showed up to her kids thing. So we want to thank Kelly for um, maintaining work life balance. <laughs> Never. Right. Obviously, because the company's goal is for them to thrive and for them to be successful. Right. So, yeah, you're probably not going to see that, but it's unfortunate. Um, and so let me talk about for myself. Like I said, I had all the dreams in the world to continue to push myself, continue to, to advance. But what actually happened is that I felt imprisoned by not only just the money that I, that I made, but the freedom that I had at that job. Um, if you remember from the last episode, I talked about, I talk about my new job, how I don't know what I'm supposed to do every day yet. There's no rhythm to the work that I do. 
there's no consistency, there's no schedule, I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. And, and in fact, what adds to it is my boss is super laid back, which I'm sure at some point, I'm gonna super uh, love that, I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna appreciate the fact that she's laid back and she's like, hey, as long as you get your work done, I don't really care about much, right? So at some point, I'm gonna appreciate that. But right now, I need structure. I need to know what I'm supposed to do. What's my expectation? What were you, where would you like me to be? What time do you want me to show up? What's the dress code? Where should I park? Um, what time should I go to lunch? How long should my lunch be? Am I allowed to go off campus? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, all these questions, right? Because again, I'm an achievement-based person and I want them to like me because of my abandonment issues. I want them to like me. I want them to keep me. Um, and so, um, yeah, all that's coming to mind. Um, but because I don't have a pattern to my current, my new job, um, I'm feeling kind of out of sorts. But with my other, my last job, it was super flexible. I love that part, but that flexibility, I'm gonna be real honest with myself here, it made me lazy. It made me stop desiring more. It made me stop chasing more. It made me stop chasing my dreams. It's, it, I allowed myself to stop even dreaming. So this episode is really a caution to people. If there's a goal of your salary, what should you do? If you want to make six figures and you're listening to my episode and you're about to get that promotion or you see it on the horizon or you just want to know what you do when you get there, here's what I would recommend. Keep dreaming. I said this uh, making six figures was on my list to do before 30. I had a list. I had a list of things that I wanted to do and I think I made that list at 25. And once I achieved that and a bunch of other things on that list, I stopped making lists. I stopped making lists. Well, that's a correction. <laughs> I had only one other thing on that list. Get married. That's it. Get married, have a baby. That was it. So what I would encourage you guys to do, one, if you start to make six figures or you make that salary goal, maybe you're making 40 right now, you get a raise, all of a sudden you're making 60, 70. Hey, that's a big shock. Okay, let's look at, because I think that some people think six figures is the goal, right? Um, but there was, um, if you guys ever heard of um, a CEO that decreased his salary, so if you guys ever heard of Dan Price, Google him. He is the CEO of a company that, um, and he read, um, I think it was uh, Harvard that uh, um, published this study, but it was a study that, um, that explored how much money people had to make to be generally happy, right? If you ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So hierarchy of needs, the lowest part is psychological needs. So that's breathing, <laughs> food, water, shelter, clothing, and sleep. Those are the basic needs that everybody needs to survive. And so once people have that, they can actually start to think about the next le level, which is safety and security. So which is um, health, employment, property, family, social ability. Once they achieve that, then they can start to thrive and think about love and be belonging, which is friends, family, intimacy, sense of connection. Once they have that, then they can start to achieve self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, the need, uh, respect of others, the need to be a unique individual. And then the last uh, um, layer for um, hierarchy needs is self-actualization, which is morality, creativity, spontaneity, acceptance, experience, uh, experience purpose, meaning and inner potential. If you've never heard of Maslow's hierarchy needs, here's your two second, here's your two second or one minute lesson in that if people's psychological need which is breathing food water shelter clothing sleep if those basic needs are not met you're not going to get much out of somebody how do you know that let's think about a homeless person if you gave a homeless guy let's say you a, a homeless guy that you realized was a finance cfo 15 years ago but he's been homeless and, and on drugs let's say you you um clean him up and you throw him in a CEO job. He's been clean for two weeks, you throw him out, right? 
If you don't address his food, water, shelter, clothing, where it's sustainable, where he can actually have a system of getting those things and creating uh, an ability for him to feel safe and, and loved, he is not going to survive in that environment as well as people. That's on the extreme, a homeless person. But uh, I'm going to go too far down the, down the road, but the whole point of, um, of um, Dan Price, he figured out what is the basic salary based on, I think, Harvard's um, um, study. They talked about 70000 being, if once a person makes 70000 the diminishing return on their happiness is starting to go down. So it said, hey, if you get people to 70,000, they're gonna be happy. They're gonna thrive. They're gonna have all their um, all their uh, psychological needs met. So that bottom level, actually the bottom two are covered. And if, you, and if you, again, you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? If their psychological and safety needs are met, they start to want to thrive. They start to want to belong. They start to have self-esteem. They start to um, um, see themselves um, in their environment. They start to have self-esteem and, and, and they, they start to search for purpose and belonging, right? So he said, hey, everybody's going to make 70000 in my in my company. So I, some, I think sometimes we think we need to make all this money to be happy and in fact we don't because i made more than that 70,000 and once i did my diminishing return of my happiness wasn't there and it's not just cuz if you, i made uh, i made over $100,000 and that that made me not happy it's because i stopped taking care of my other needs let's look back at them right psychological needs check covered i had food shelter water clothing sleep I had somewhere to lay my head, check. Um, safety, healthcare, employment, property, uh, family, and social ability. Even though I wasn't married, all those were checked. I had a family, I had a tribe, I had friends, I had an employment, I had property, check. Loving and belonging. This could be a little, you know, cause I didn't have a significant other. So yeah, that could be a little iffy, right? Uh, Self-esteem, confidence, achievement, respect of others, the need to, to be a unique individual, I had that. Here's the problem. Self-actualization, morality, creativity, spontaneity, acceptance, experience, purpose, meaning, and inner potential. That's where I stopped. I did not continue down that road of, again, I was in a, I was, I had the ability to be creative, but not in the way that fed me. And I didn't push myself to find what those things were. Again, I didn't, I didn't push myself to dream. I didn't push myself to go, okay, you completed all these things on your list before 30. Now what? Other than a man, what do you want? Because I can't, I can't just make a man appear, right? If I could, I would, <laughs> you know. No, but I can't just make a man appear, um, so I have to have goals that I have individual control over. Um, and I just stopped. I didn't have any more goals. So that's my cautionary tale to people is if you have a goal of where your salary, of where you want your salary to be, if you find yourself close to that, if you find yourself there, continue to dream, continue to dream, force yourself to dream and and make those achievements. Because I was achieving things at work. I was checking things off, getting them done. Great pat on my backs. People were grateful and thankful that I was helping with them with stuff. But because I was a consultant, I was helping others to achieve their goals, but I stopped achieving my own. I allowed my goals to transform into their goals. But guess what happens when you do that? You don't get the reward from somebody else achieving their goal. Okay, they achieved their goal. Um, I remember, so like the leadership team, if I helped them achieve their goal, they got a bonus. I didn't. I got thank yous. I got their appreciation because those were their goals. I didn't meet, I had, my goals were their goals really. That's how my leadership structured it. 
but I should have had some goals that I personally set for myself. I could have possibly launched this podcast five years ago. I could have written a book. I could have run that marathon that I've always had a dream to run. I could have had all these different things, but I poured myself, my time, my effort, my energy, my skills into other people's dreams, other people's goals. So there's nothing wrong with you helping other people, helping people to achieve their goals, but there's a problem when those goals become yours and you don't have any of your own. So that's what I would recommend, have your own goals. Here's a here's another thing that if you're, um, and this probably should have been in how I prepared myself episode, but um, I didn't think about it until after. One of the goals that I had for myself when I made that much money is to meet with a financial um, um, consultant and have them help me to build a financial plan for the money. I didn't do that. I should have done it. Um, because I probably would have been in a different situation. So if you are facing a significant salary increase, again, I was already going to be promoted and I had a number in my head and they met that, which was already over what I was currently making, obviously, plus 15,000, ain't no way. I should have had multiple things, multiple things. And I believe that if I would have had those goals and I would have achieved those goals and checked them off, I'm, I'm achieving so many goals right now, it's driving me to get up every day. It's exciting me to continue to do things. Like with this podcast and with my streaming that I talked about in the last episode, and then now with me working out, I have very specific goals that I'm trying to meet. And it's, it's giving me energy to get up every day and be excited to go to work. I still have some anxiety there, but I'm excited to go to work because once I'm off of work, now I can take that time and pour it into those other goals. And I'm so excited. I'm hourly wise, I'm I'm working more now than I have in a long time. And I'm and I am energized because they're my personal goals that I'm checking off. Yeah, I can't even tell you. I worked a long day on Thursday, came home. Well, I went to go walk my mom's dogs that I do every day um, or almost every day. And I came home. I edited my pod uh, podcast. That took me about two hours. And I jumped on to stream until later, late in that night. And I woke up Friday ready for work. I was tired, but I was ready to work. And I felt so excited because I was like, man, look at me checking these goals off. Look at me being consistent with this podcast. I'm about to load episode, at the time, episode six. All right, loaded episode six. Here we are filming episode seven. And right now filming episode eight. How excited that I am because two months ago, I didn't even believe I could do this. And here I am doing it excited to continue to do it, excited to continue to learn, excited to continue to see where it goes. And I wish I would have done that like five, six years ago. So I give that to you. Oops, excuse me. I give that to you if, again, if you are facing a significant salary increase or you're in your desired salary or period. Can I just say period? Have some personal goals for yourself Work is work. I used to think that, you know, there's that saying that if you find what you're passionate for, you're never going to have to work a day in your life. For me right now, that's a lie. That's a lie. I am going to work every day for a company. So then once I'm off, I can continue to work on my passion until it becomes, if it becomes, my goal is that it is, it will become the main gig. But I'll still have to work. I still have to work and I'm passionate about what I'm doing right now, work-wise for a company and what I'm doing for my personal because it's helping me to be creative. It's helping me to achieve my inner personal goals that I have for myself. So I really encourage you guys to keep dreaming, make those lists. If And if you've never made a list of your personal goals, make them and be bold in them, be bold. I want to make six figures in three years. 
We are living in a time. I do it all the time on this show. Google it. How do I make six figures? Let's do it right now. Legally. <laughs> Seven skills you need to earn. You need to earn a six-figure salary. One, research. To earn six figures, you need to pick a profession that pays six figures. You can Google that. What professions make six figures? I bet you it would shock you. Not every six-figure job do you need a degree in, in. There are a lot of trade jobs, plumbing for one, electrician for one, construction for one, that you can make six figures. Why? Because a lot of millennials and Gen Zs don't want to do labor. They don't want to do blue collar work. But blue collar work people are pulling in some money. So you might want to just figure that out. Get you a trade. Okay? Uh, persevere. Perseverance. It may not happen right away. I agree. It might not happen right away. Negotiation. That is key right there. You could be at 70,000 right now a year or $60,000 a year, you could have probably negotiated for five more thousand, maybe even 10 when you got the job that you got right now. Learn how to negotiate. That is a huge skill. Um, confidence. I believe you need to have confidence. You could fake it till you make it. You could fake it till you make it. Trust me. Uh, planning. Again, write down your list research what do you need to do to get there if it's a certification if you need a welding certification electric uh electric technician certification carpenter certification whatever it is because maybe you don't want to go to to get a uh, master's degree or a bachelor's degree you don't have to you don't have to there's money out there okay uh risk taking yeah you need to take risk there's no way you're gonna have to take a risk you need to figure out what is the what is the what is the highest amount of risk you're willing to take, and I'm not talking about these get quick, uh, get rich quick schemes, these Ponzi scheme type of stuff. I'm not talking like that. You see that shit on um, on YouTube that talks about making money off of Amazon. I I can't tell you if that works. I never met anybody that that works, but people are saying it. But if they're asking you for thousands of dollars so you can make a million dollars a year. You think they, if they could make a million dollars more a year, you know what a millionaire loves to do? Make another million. So they're making money off of you buying those classes. So I don't know what the success rate is off of that, but be careful. Networking, that is so true. Oh, it says networking. No woman is an island. No person is an island. You will not get to six figures or higher salary by yourself. You just won't. Um, and you need to look it up. If you want, let's say you want to be a CEO. Let's say you want to be a director, manager of a big company. You don't want to be an entrepreneur, right? You're going to need a network of people. So learn what people do that are already in a position that you are. Look at who their network is and try to mimic that. So those are seven steps. And when you break it down like that, when you break it down like that, it's really not that difficult it's just all up here it's all up here um and i haven't <laughs> some people don't have no pride there was a stu there was a news article that said that um that um people that ask for money like off the freeway make six figures why because they have the nerve they have the balls they don't have any shame they're gonna stand out there all day, every day, asking for money. They get a dollar here, ten dollars here, five dollars here, twenty dollars there. It's all tax free. It's all tax free. So I'm not saying stand on stand uh, off of a freeway asking for money. I'm saying that whatever you, whatever your goal is, because you think that making six figures is where you want to be because of financial goals, personal goals that, that you have for yourself, make a list. Or whatever your goal is, maybe it's 80,000. Make a list of things that you want to do, that you want to achieve, and go after it. And like I said, blue collar work, oof. I even thought about going to carpentry, carpentry, I don't know how to say it, but being a carpenter. 
I basically looked it up. Why? Because I like to do DIYs. So I love to know how to put up a uh, sheetrock by myself so I didn't have to pay nobody else to do it. I would love to know how to hang a sh chandelier so I didn't have to pay nobody else to do it. Uh, if so, if I turn up being a carpenter, mind your business. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, um, I made a really long episode to say once you make the desired money that you thought that you had or you may you got a significant pay increase don't settle continue to dream think about your next step think about what you want think about what you have and how can you allow what you have to continue to build dream once once so now that my all those different needs that we went over were met i should have been focusing on my self actualization, morality, creativity, spontaneity, acceptance, experience, uh, purpose, meaning, and inner potential. That's where I should have gone. Because then, once I got there, then I'm looking to kind of start from the ground up. Okay, how do I build safety and security in this space? How do I build belonging in this space? How do I build my self-esteem in this space? Because now I've created another need for myself. So that's what I would tell you guys. Continue to dream. Continue. And I pray that you dream some pretty damn big dreams. Because I don't want anybody to feel root bound. I don't want anybody to look back on their life and, and have any shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I want you to dream big. I want you to be bold in dreaming big. I want you to make plans. I want you to be strategic. I want you to be... Um, clear i want you to be okay with failing i want you to be okay to ask for help i want you to be okay with typing every little step into google because like i said google and youtube have been my friend creating this podcast and i would not have been able to do that if i uh if i didn't take that first step and and when i talked about um in, um, I think it was episode five, um, how did I prepare myself? I allowed myself to dream. That was the first step. Okay, now you don't have a job. What would you like to do? I said podcasts, streaming, working on my fitness, um, working for the company that I worked for. I had another personal goal. Again, I wanna be married, I wanna have kids. Um, but I need to, I need, I need a partner in that. <laughs> I can't do it by myself. I need somebody to meet me in the middle. Um, and, but all the goals that I have on me, I'm working on. All the goals that I have influence on, I'm working on. And if you think about it, what, you know, I'm going through therapy and I'm doing this podcast, I'm working on my mental. So when I meet that man that's supposed to be my partner for life, I now have something that I'm building myself. And and I think passion attracts passion. Uh, dedication attracts dedication. Uh, uh, determination, it attracts it. Hustle mentality, it, tr it attracts like, like attracts alike. And um, so I'm working on it. So if you out there, Holla at you, girl. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me stop. Anyway, this was episode eight. Thank you guys so much for watching, for listening. And if you have a few moments to spare, go ahead and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, as well as on YouTube. Leave me a comment, ask me some questions, and leave me a review. Let me know what you guys think about the last couple episodes and what you might want to hear from me in the future. Have a good day. Be safe. Bye.